our first debate. Ladies and gentlemen, cheetahs are pretty curious cats. They are the fastest land animal in the world, and yet they're curiously timid in the nature. They don't even roar. Did you know that their cries are actually similar to a cat's meow? But according to the Madhya Pradesh government, they possibly also wield information that could be critical to a nation's security and its international relations. Well, the State Forest Department definitely feels so, which is why it has rejected a right to information request by wildlife activist Ajay Dubey, who had sought information on the health of the big cats at the much-wanted cheetah project at the Kuno National Park. If you think that's bizarre, wait to hear the justification cited. It's Section 81A of the RTI Act. Now, just to set the record straight, this section of the RTI is cited when there is any information that can, number one, affect the sovereignty and integrity of India, or impact security, scientific and economic interests, or can potentially impact relations with a foreign state, or finally, lead to the incitement of an offence. National security fears over information about cheetahs. Surely, this does not make sense. I'm being joined by two very esteemed guests, wildlife conservationists and experts, Ravi Chelam and Ajay Suri. But before I go across to you, gentlemen, it's also my pleasure to be joined by Ajay Dube. Ajay Dube is the RTI activist who filed this request. He has been doing so for many years, and then he has recently been rebuffed. Ajay Dube ji, thank you for speaking to Mera now. First of all, tell me, why did you file the request of RTI? देखिए मैं वाइल्डलाइफ मैं करीब 20 साल से मैं एक्टिवली काम कर रहा हूं मेरा जो चीता प्रोजेक्ट को लेके आरटीए में क्वेश्चन था कि चीता प्रोजेक्ट का इस समय स्टेटस क्या है उस स्टेटस में करेस्पोंडेंस जो एजेंसी है एनटीसीए है और इन सब के बीच में भी चल क्या रहा है क्योंकि जो मानसून का सीजन रहता है और जो अभी समर सीजन था इसमें चीते बहुत सेंसिटिव होते हैं इनकी हेल्थ स्टेटस क्या है तो ये सब चीजें जाननी थी और चीता प्रोजेक्ट में मैंने फेब्रुअरी करीब छह महीने पहले मैंने एक्सपोज किया था आरटीआई डॉक्यूमेंट की मदद से कि वहां पे पहला जो इंडिया बॉर्न चीता था उस कप का पैर फ्रैक्चर हो गया था और चीता प्रोजेक्ट ने उसको बताया नहीं था लोगों को नवंबर में उसका पैर फ्रैक्चर हुआ और हम लोगों ने आर से जब इन्फॉर्मेशन निकाली फरवरी में तब पता चला तो वहां एम्बेजरमेंट ऑफ फंड हो रहा है वहां पे चीतों को कैप्टिव ब्रीडिंग टाइप से रखा जा रहा है तो चीता प्रोजेक्ट की जो डिटेल्स थी वो मांगी थी हमने तो अजय जी आपका कहना है कि आपने पहले भी आरटीआई रिक्वेस्ट फाइल की और उसके पहले सरकार ने आपके सारे आरटीआई रिक्वेस्ट का जवाब दिया था बट इस बार अचानक उन्होंने जवाब देने से मना कर दिया एम आई राइट हाँ इस बार उन्होंने रिजेक्ट कर दिया क्योंकि वो नहीं चाहते हैं कि जो चीता जो प्रोजेक्ट है उसकी रिपोर्ट बाहर आए और सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट है कि ट्रांसपेरेंसी में पहले भी जब आरटीआई फाइल हुई थी तब भी दिक्कत होती थी और चीता प्रोजेक्ट की जो भी इंफॉर्मेशन है वो कहीं ना कहीं सरकार हाइड कर रही है क्योंकि चीतों को ओपन में नहीं छोड़ा जा रहा है फ्री रेंज नहीं रखा गया है उनको एनक्लोजर्स में रखा गया है तो अजय जी ये बताइए व्हाट वाज़ द जस्टिफिकेशन गिवन टू यू बाय द मध्य प्रदेश गवर्नमेंट क्योंकि जो डिफेंस उन्होंने लिया है जो साइट किया है वो काफी मतलब अद्भुत है जिनको सही कर सोचा नहीं जाता कि नेशनल सिक्योरिटी थ्रेटन हो जाती है अगर चीता पर इंफॉर्मेशन दिया जाए तो देखिए बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग जो कि एमपी गवर्नमेंट में जिस जो अप्लाई ही नहीं होता है उनके द्वारा यह कहा गया था कि आरटीआई के रिप्लाई से विदेशी साउथ अफ्रीका कीनिया नाइबीबिया से रिश्ते खराब हो जाएंगे सेकेंडली उन्होंने ये कहा कि इससे देश की सुरक्षा को खतरा है अब चीता प्रोजेक्ट में यदि ट्रांसपेरेंसी होती है टैक्स पेयर को पता चलता है तो इसमें विदेशी दे, देशों के नाराज होने का कहां से अब मामला आया ये कहीं ना कहीं गड़बड़ घोटाले को छुपा रहे हैं और जो चीते फ्री रेंज होने थे जंगलों में उनको एनक्लोज में रखा गया है ये इस चीता प्रोजेक्ट की असफलता है जिसको वो जनता को नहीं बताना चाहते हैं ओके okay, तो काफी गंभीर आरोप लगा रहे हैं आप अजय दुबे जी एंड 
शक तो होता है क्योंकि द रीजन साइटेड बाय द मध्य प्रदेश गवर्नमेंट आर डू नॉट रियली एड अप अजय दुबे जी थैंक यू सो मच फॉर स्पीकिंग टू मेरा नाउ लेट मी नाउ गो अक्रॉस टू माय गेस्ट हु हैव बीन वेटिंग पेशेंटली रवि चेलम वाइल्ड लाइफ बायोलॉजिस्ट एंड अजय सूरी वाइल्ड लाइफ एक्सपर्ट एंड आल्सो फिल्म मेकर एज वेल मिस्टर रवि चेलम आई विल कम टू यू फर्स्ट दिस डजंट मेक सेंस इट्स वन थिंग टू से दैट यू आर नॉट कीन ऑन गिविंग आउट इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन द चीतास which itself is suspicious but to cite them as saying that doing so will violate national security will impact internal uh, international relations of india uh, with countries i would assume from where the cheetahs have been brought in it just max of just not wanting to be transparent and not wanting to be clear with automatically raises suspicions if everything is fine in kuno nothing has been fine in kuno for a long time right from the day the cheetahs landed because yeah. the project is founded on extremely poor scientific foundations very dubious conservation claims and is in conflict with the judgment of the supreme court in 2013 the supreme court ordered the translocation of lions from gir to kuno in letter and spirit within 6 months mm -hmm. we are now in 2024 no lions have been moved silly excuses are given but we are able to get african cheetahs from thousands of kilometers away at very short notice neither is it scientifically accurate nor is it conservationally justifiable it is not even part of our national wildlife action plan don't forget about a year ago the madhya pradesh forest department issued what i can only diplomatically call a gag order it basically said nobody should speak about yep. the project unless authorized so public money is being spent crores of rupees are being spent communities are, be, are being relocated villages are being relocated and you now not just in kuno in gandhi sagar in banni the disease in some sense is spreading and when you ask for information we are told we can't give it so i mean it's it's beyond farcical indeed let me try and be the devil's advocate on behalf of the madhya pradesh government ajay sorry yes we know that uh, we are running these graphics of how many cheetahs have perished yes we know that a lot of the initial batch of cheetahs are no longer there the first four batch of cubs which were produced in the which were birthed at the kuno park out of them three of them died in a few months but so far in the last few months there have been uh, I, to my knowledge there have been around 12 cubs who have been birthed roughly around that figure things seem to be going well can we simply put down the initial few lapses or the initial few hiccups down to teething troubles because let's be honest no one in living memory in india knows how to bring up a cheetah through past experience you can only try and as a scientific experiment sometimes things will go wrong you are absolutely right and i've got uh, i've got completely different take from the two panelists you know i won't be just hurt ever since okay. the inception of this program project cheetah the jury was sharply divided over whether the project would succeed or fail even now it's it's sharply divided but now we have the facts on our side two lots of cheetahs came to india the first batch from namibia uh, consisted of eight cheetahs in september 2022 yes. and in february of the next year 12 came and then uh, by june 2023 six cheetah cubs died and there was lot of lot of glee and jubilation in the you know doomsday club who from day one had been suggested suggesting that you know that this entire project uh, is inviable cheetah is not uh, you know fit to be brought to india but look at the reality now you have 12 cheetah cubs born this year which actually points to i won't say the project has succeeded you have to give it more time the fact remains that the cheetah being the yes. world's fastest animal and it leads it needs a lot of space to run so in all fairness we have to give a lot of space and a lot of time to to uh, for for the conclusion of this uh, project cheetah and let me also draw a very interesting parallel here in 1972 project tiger was launched when tiger was on the brink of extinction in india and even till 2012 that is 40 mm. years later the sword of extinction extinction was still hanging strong on the tiger you know till 2012 2013 we were okay. used we used to have similar tv discussions 
as to when will Tiger be wiped out and uh, uh, from the face of India. And that was the time when Sariska and Panna, two national parks, lost all their tigers. But look what has happened now. Tiger has made a remarkable comeback in India. No. So we have to give more time to Project Cheetah. We Mr. Suri, I, I'm not a wildlife Suri, biologist. I really... I'm not an expert. Mr. I'm a wildlife filmmaker. I'm... I'm I, I, I'm not on either camp to suggest, you know, whether... Mr. The, Suri, I really appreciate your optimism and I would yeah. tend to agree with it had it not been for the fact that you opened your argument saying the facts are out there. The facts yeah. are not out there. They're not being put out by the Madhya Pradesh government in response to an RTI with the most flimsiest of reasons here. Does that not lead to suspicion that something needs to be covered up? Because otherwise, what's the if everything was hunky-dory, or at least if things were looking up in this project, why not put it out in front of the entire public? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know the reason why it's being done. But but I'm I'm drawing your attention to the bigger picture that nobody can say that. Project Cheetah okay. has failed, you know, in India. I mean, whether it has failed or not failed, you have to give time to this Project Cheetah the way you gave time to Project Tiger. I mean, you cannot you cannot draw immature conclusions, you know, by way of TV debates and some some specialists coming and saying, hey, look, uh, you know, what I'm saying is correct. You know, there have been so many naysayers from day one, and all of them have been proved wrong. Today, we have 26 Cheetahs. I'm still not suggesting that, you know, uh, it's a 100% victory for Project Tiger, but we are on, and, and also look at uh, another aspect, that that Project Cheetah was launched in Kuno, but now it is it has spread to Gandhi Sagar's yes. uh, uh, sanctuary in Madhya Pradesh, mm. and the Central Zoo Authority is already given uh, its go-ahead uh, to introduce Cheetah in the Bunny grasslands of Gujarat. So this project is evolving. It's not, it's not stuck in some kind of a time capsule. Okay. And you just cannot put a date as to, look, it has to succeed in one year, two years, and only then, uh, you know, we will know the... Okay. I agree. We, we still do not know the fate of Project Cheetah, whether it will succeed or not. But, okay, so Ravi Chelam, are uh, we being two, unnecessarily yes. or pessimistic about it? Uh, do you agree yeah. with the parallels Mr. Suri has drawn between Project Tiger and Project Cheetah? I completely disagree. Tigers were resident from the foothills okay. of the Himalayas all the way to Kanyakumari, from the west in Rajasthan to the northeast Indian states, maybe in reduced numbers. But there were still dozens, if not hundreds of tigers, even when Project Tiger was launched. I think the official estimate, if I remember correctly, was 1732 tigers, 1732 tigers. Today, all the cheetahs we have, but for one, are confined to about six square kilometers of fenced habitat. Some of the cheetahs are close mm. to two years in captivity. These, this was never the plan. The action plan has been junked. The, he talks of Gandhi Sagar and Bunni. Again, these are enclosures. Cheetahs need vast areas something in the region of 700 square yeah. kilometers per annum. India just does That's not have how the space. They travel. No, it's not about how they travel. It's about yeah. the density at which they exist. Cheetahs are the smallest and weakest okay. of the large cats. They can't afford to exist in high density, unlike a leopard, which is very adept at climbing trees to escape a lion or a tiger. Cheetahs can climb a tree, but not as efficiently as that of a leopard. So they have to exist in low densities to be able to survive. So to kind of compare Project Tiger and say you have to give time, why are you not following the action plan? Why is the action plan junk? Bunny was never part of the action plan. And Bunny, what has been sanctioned is a captive breeding facility again. And let's not forget, Namibian government okay. regulations are very clear. Captive bred cheetahs are unfit for being released. So this is just a glorified safari park. You're going to get more and more of okay. glorified safari parks. It's not conservation. If it's such a conservation imperative, why is it not part of a national wildlife okay. action plan? There are some, yes, these are very in important, pertinent questions, Ravi Chalam, no doubt about it. And if only the Madhya Pradesh government was a bit more transparent, then we would have known these answers. For now, perhaps 
Let's try and be optimistic. Nobody wants to be unnecessarily pessimistic about these animals. There are great concerns. Let's be optimistic. Let's hope that this plan, Project Cheetah, much like nature itself, is evolving. Thank you so much for joining me, gentlemen, Ajay Suri and Ravi Chelam. I really appreciated this debate. But for now, let's switch our focus to India's Olympic campaign.